Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Today on Fight to Win, I'm going to talk to you about dealing with the fear in your life and beginning to expect, instead of calamity, expect deliverance. And in tactical tips, I'm going to teach you how to throw a side elbow. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much Jesus loves you and give you the ability to fight to win. Now, get ready for a tactical tip from Pastor Kurt. Today we've been talking about, or over the last couple, we've been talking about elbows. Today I want to talk to you about a different elbow. Now I've already shown you the forward elbow. Now we're going to talk about a side elbow. I'm still going to get some movement out of my feet. I'm going to move with my body so I'm not just hitting him with my arm. But this is if somebody tries to walk up on my side, grab me around. If I'm, if I'm surrounded and I hit this guy and I hit this guy and now I'm going to come back to this guy. Again, it's got to be close. Um, you can see with me in the bag that if I'm here, it's going to take a lot of distance for me to hit it. But this, it, it's a nice solid strike. It's also, if somebody is um, trying to pull me, and, and it can work for a bear hug. It, bear hugs, you kind of go more back, but it's the same motion and you just have to go further back. But what the goal of it is, is to get them off of you. They're trying to come in from a side movement. Or what if you turned? What if, if the fight started like this and I was here and then I, st I stepped sideways and so this won't work. A forward elbow is not going to work, but, but I can hit them with that. It's a very, very useful tool, but it is a very, very close range tool. And that's a side elbow or... Sometimes I call it a lunging elbow, elbow. And you can see it does a lot of damage. So practice this. It's just boom, boom. Same thing we're hitting right here. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Welcome back to Fight to Win. I hope you've been getting a lot out of this. Uh, we've been talking about how to walk my faith. And over the last several, we've been talking about stirring up your hope and uh, getting that working because a lot of times people are trying to engage in faith and believe God, but they actually have no hope. And faith is the substance, according to Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And again, I've said a lot of over the last, this is my third week teaching on this. Next week will be my final week, at least that's my hope. Um, also my producer's hope. And so... Um, but I, there's, I'm, there's a lot I'm not going to be able to say. So I want to remind you, the partners and I are giving this away absolutely free. You can go to KurtOwen.com and we'll send this to you. It's 19 hours of how to walk by faith. Now, how are you doing with some of the stuff that I'm teaching? The point of this, uh, the broadcast, I, I hope you understand is I'm teaching you this so you can do it, Right. I'm teaching you this so that we can come together. I'm teaching you this so that your life can begin to line up with God's picture of your life. And that means in every area of your life, spirit, soul, body, financially, and socially. And so I'm, I strongly encourage you to be meditating on these things. And as you're watching and listening to the broadcast, do it. Now, I know some of you listen to these uh, via podcasts and stuff, and I got to remember to start promoting the podcast. Listen to them several times. Don't just listen to them once. I know some of you like download the whole week at one point and just listen to it all the way through. That's great. But if you're going to do that, why don't you listen to the whole week several times? Get it all down on the inside of you. Because especially when we start talking about that faith is the substance of things expected. And where in Romans, where we're going to get to in just a second, um, in, in 4, uh, 18, right? that who contrary to hope and hope belief, you're going to have to stir up your hope. And I would hazard to guess most of you or most of us have had a lot of different circumstances trying to beat our hope out of us, right? Trying to beat out us out of our expectation. And in particular, some of you who have sought to believe God and it didn't work out, 
and you're thinking of all these faith failures. And so your actual expectancy is maybe it's just not going to work out again. I don't know why you had your faith failure. There's, there can be a multitude of reasons. But I'm telling you that according to the Word of God, what we're doing will work. Remember how we looked there in Hebrews 6 where it says, to imitate those who through faith and patience inherited the promises. And now we've been looking at Abraham walking by faith and endeavoring to do what he did. Okay? And again, he started with the Word. He got to know God, right? He made a decision to believe God. He realized and, and came to the place he realized he really was God Almighty. He realized that no matter how hopeless the situation was, God gives life to the dead. And so even though his body was as good as dead and Sarah's body was as good as dead, it didn't make any difference because he was gone and God could fix it, right? And he also began to realize that God does things through his word, through speaking his word, and God has the expectation to, of, of us to speak his word right along with him. And so then, so that's kind of a synopsis. And then we see where contrary to hope, in hope believed. And he believed according to the promise. This is why you must get the word of God down on the inside of you. You must. Okay. And that's the point of these broadcasts is to help you, tutor you, disciple you in the Word of God and get these things down on the inside of you, okay? Now, we're, again, we're in verse 18 now, Romans 4, 18. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. There's another way, can I paraphrase that, Kurt Owen version? who contrary to hope in hope believed, he believed the word and became what the word said he was. He believed the word and he expected that word to make him what that word said he was. He expected God to fulfill his promise. You know, um, I haven't taught on fear yet. I don't think on the broadcast and at some point I'm going to need to because we have to deal with fear. Fear is the way, is fear, the fear of death. Those are the ways that the forces of darkness seek to govern us. But uh, for years ago, there was a, um, it actually originated with Mary Baker Eddy, the fine founder of Christian Science. And I do not recommend Christian Science at all. They do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They think all sin is of the mind. There's just a bunch of, hooey with it. Okay. It's, but, um, I spent my, my grandmother and my mother flirted with Christian science when I was younger. Okay. So we ended up going to some Christian science reading rooms a few times and that's what they call a church. And, um, and so, uh, but she originated this statement called that fear is false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R. And it's a cutesy little thing, right? And honestly, some of that cutesy, I do use cutesy stuff, I guess, but I try to avoid it somewhat because I, since I preach all over the world, fear in America might say um, is f false evidence appearing real, but that's not the same word in Spanish. It's not the same word in French. So your cutesy little thing doesn't work, right? Um, so, but she came up with this statement and I hear preachers say it all the time, fear is false evidence appearing real. And it's like, oh yeah, let's write that down. That's really cool. But that's hogwash, right? If I take a real gun and I point it at your real head, you're going to be real dead if you don't know a real God. That is not false evidence appearing real. No. That is real evidence with real bullets. And if you don't know God, you should be afraid. Okay? That is not false evidence appearing real. It is not false evidence appearing real when the, is when the Egyptians are got you on one side and the Red Sea has you on another. That is not false evidence appearing real. That is real. 
It is not false evidence appearing real when the, the king tells you that if you don't do what I tell you to do, I'm going to heat the oven seven times hotter and I'm going to throw you in. And then he does it. That is not false evidence appearing real. Right? It is not false evidence appearing real when the doctor tells you you have cancer. That is not false evidence appearing real. But if you engage in fear, if you have a promise from God, just because in any of those things, if the doctor says cancer, if you're about to be thrown to what you believe to be your destruction, a burning fiery furnace, or if you have enemies that are at your back, clamoring at your heels, wanting to destroy you, you need to understand there's a promise that covers those. And you need to quit expecting those to be able to do what they're threatening to do. You have to begin to expect that cancer cannot do what it's threatening to do. Your enemies cannot do what they're threatening to do. This thing that's threatening to destroy you cannot do what it is threatening to do. If you have a promise from God and lay hold and release faith in that promise... Fear is not false evidence appearing real. Do you want to know what fear is? Fear is the expectation of a failure of a promise of God. That if you are afraid, you're expecting the promise of God to fail. And you need to stop. People say, I can't stop. Yes, you can. You can stop. It's going to take effort on your part. Oh, that's works. That's works. No, it is laboring to enter into rest. That you spend time with God. You spend time with that promise until that's what you expect. Abraham had spent 60 years with his body and his wife's body. Well, I don't she I mean, he wouldn't have known her whole 60 years, but you, you get what I'm saying. 50 years, 40 years. For 40 years, let's say they were in their 20s when they met. 40 years he had spent time with a body and with his wife's body and had no expectation of deliverance, no expectation of change. But then he met a God that came into his life and says, I want to help you. I want to bless you. And here is my word. And then... Abraham spent enough time with this God and enough time with this promise until he began to expect this God to fulfill that promise. And if he had been afraid that he wouldn't, he would have expected that promise to fail. They've just told you you have cancer and something tried to grip you, right? Well, listen, you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. That the Lord Jesus himself, that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. That cancer does not have a right to eat up your body. You belong to God. You, your body has been bought with a price. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and it has, cancer has no right to infiltrate it and to stay there. It has no right to operate. The law of sin and death operating through cancer has no right to you because you have been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb and the Lord Jesus Christ has made you free from the law of sin and death by imparting the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus into you. Now you need to expect one law to produce in your life. Which one are you going to choose to expect? Are you going to choose to expect the law of the spirit of life? Or are you going to expect the law of sin and death? Which one are you expecting? The only way to fear is to expect the promise of God to fail. That's it. That's the only way to fear. You, and, and again, I'm, I, I can't get much further over into fear because I've got to go on. But... And this is a harsh reality, and, 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 and people do not like this, okay? And people will argue with me about this, but scripturally, I'm right, okay? If you're afraid, you do not know and believe the love that God has for you. Because if you knew and believed the love that God had for you, 
has for you. That perfect love would cast out fear. It would remove it. Anytime I'm afraid, I know that I am not believing the love of God. I know that I am not accepting and expecting the love of God to operate in my life. And fear, you're expecting something other than the Word of God. And you need to, yeah, but you don't understand. I have no reason to expect anything different. I understand. Contrary to hope. But now you've found out about a God who made promises to you and swore those promises in the blood of His own Son. All of the promises of God in Jesus are yes and amen. Uh, let's look at that right quick. That's in um, 2 Corinthians. Um, I think it's chapter 1. Yeah, chapter 1, verse 20. For all of the promises of God in Him are yes and in Him amen to the glory of God through us. Amen means so be it. What it's saying here is when you lift up a promise of God, that the, God responds to that promise by saying, yes, so be it. Yes, so be it. Lord, I thank you that the doctors just told me that I have cancer. But Lord, your word says that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. God's response is, yes, so be it. Be free of cancer. The price was paid. Now, healing is a slightly different because you then have to exercise your own authority. Body, you listen, cells, you listen to me, I'm talking to you. I command every, every rebellious cell to, be, uh, to come into alignment with the Word of God. I command body, you listen to me, I'm talking to you. I command you to be uh, cancer-free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And when you use His name, you are using every promise His name guarantees. All the promises of God in Jesus are yes and amen. Now, if what I'm saying to you is completely foreign, this is the first day you've been listening to this. Again, absolutely free. Go to KurtOwen.com and allow us to bless you with this. 19 hours of teaching, absolutely free to get you rooted and grounded in the love of God and to change your expectancy from calamity to rejoicing because God is true. Amen? Man, that's, that's good. Um, go with me to, we're back in Romans 4. And we're gonna, let's move on. I, I can't spend much, time on, much more time on hope, right? Um, hope, remember, is, is to expect positively. Let, let's just real quick here, just so for the sake of this, um, go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, f f say it like this. Hope is the blueprint that faith builds. Okay? If you have no blueprint, what are you expecting faith to build? You've got to stir up your hope. And please don't sit there and tell me again how hopeless your situation is. I get it. Contrary to hope. But now we're going to expect the promise of God. We're going to look for it. We're going to prepare for it. Now, yeah, and let me, okay, let me give you an idea. It's something that happened one time. We bought a building one time. And when I made the deal to buy the building, I had absolutely no money to buy the building. Okay. Um, I mean, and I, I think the down payment was, um, I don't know. This is years ago. Maybe it's ten thousand dollars. Okay, and I had two. Right, I'm not anywhere close. Okay, I don't even know if I had two. I, actually, I didn't. I had a couple hundred dollars. I, I had less than a thousand. Now that I'm remembering that, right, right. So I don't. Ha I, I don't have the money, and I, I I've made a commitment. I believe this building is what we're supposed to get. And so, and this is just a side journey here. Okay. Um, but I'm sitting there in front of the building. I don't have the money to buy it. I've just made a deal to buy the building <laughs> and I'm going to have to come up with the money in, I think it was like, uh, 45 days or 60 days, right. To, to write the, the first check. 
Now, I don't have the money to write the first check, but I realize this building is on a completely opposite side of town from where, I, where our building currently is. And that if we were going to receive our mail, we could not, we, we normally use post office boxes, right? Because there's always somebody there to receive it and everything. And so um, what we did was, uh, what I did was, our mail currently at the time was on one side of town, but if we got this building, that would mean that every day somebody was gonna have to drive 30 minutes to go get the mail. But there was a post office not 10 minutes from the new building. So this is what I did. Because remember, I don't have $10,000. I've got less than 1,000. But I could rent a P.O. box at the close mailbox for, I think it was $200 for the year, I think at the time. I did have $200. So because I'm expecting to be able to buy this building and now I'm, I'm, I'm expecting the promise of God to come to pass. I'm expecting the will of God to come to pass. I went to the new mailbox that was just a few minutes away and I rented a mailbox. Even though I don't have the building yet, even though there's no evidence I have the money to have the building yet, that was a step I could take because I'm expecting for that building to become mine. Expectancy will cause you to start thinking about things, start making plans, okay? That's what, that you need to understand that. You need to start thinking about what are you going to do when God does His Word, not what are you gonna do if God doesn't fulfill His promise. What are you gonna do? You know, right now we're believing God for, uh, I don't know when you'll watch this, but we're, we, we're believing God for $250,000 right now that we need because we have outgrown ourselves, okay? We've been growing at three, two to uh, 5% a month. In fact, you know what? Today's offering day on the broadcast. We can talk about this. We've been touching lives, the, the partners and I, we've, we've been touching people's lives all over the world faster than we ever have before. This year we put, um, we funded orphanages and we put clothes on orphans, but then we also kept about 100, 150 ministers from quitting the ministry this year. We have literally mailed out thousands of product in the last 12 months, absolutely free. Product that costs money. When we give away a book, that is a minimum $10 a book when it goes out. Five for the cost of the book um, and five for the shipping, $4.96 or something like that. Okay, um, and so we, we've, been, we've been doing all this. One of the ways that I, and so right now, we need $100,000 pretty much immediately because if it just trickles in, honestly, it doesn't help because it just gets eaten up on, because it, okay, here's, here's the way it works. We're growing at two to 5% a month normally, okay? Of people that call, people that contact, people that get saved. Uh, people that request materials, two to 5% a month. If we don't have $100,000 at one time, then if you just send in like a, a little bit, what happens is, and, and listen, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not despising the little gifts. Please don't get me wrong. I rejoice as much over the $10 as I do over the $10,000 because I know that you're trying. I know that you're reaching out and, and you're in this together. But unless we can put $100,000, if several of us don't come together and put it together $100,000, then the money just gets eaten up because at 2 to 5% a month, I can't really fix anything because as we grow, our expenses grow. Like if we, if we mail out 5% more books this month, okay, that's going to be, I, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but a lot of trickling in is just going to eat that up. I, I hope that makes sense to you. And so I have to have it all at one time so I can like put in a building all at one time so I can consolidate some television bills all at one time, all, all of that stuff to go on a TV station. R recently, we had the opportunity to go on a satellite network at a great price, whereas normally it's $1,500 a day. They were going to give us um, our show for, what is it, uh, it's 1,500 bucks a day. I don't know what the math would be for five days, but what they were gonna do is $5,000 a month. We were gonna be able to go on a satellite network, but we couldn't do it because I, we just don't, our income right now, mo a lot of our money is being used not only to pay for the current TV stations, but to give away all this free product. And so 
But one of the things, I want to go back to expectancy, okay? I, I was trying to explain to you kind of the project. But one of the things that I've been doing is, is I've been meditating on writing a $25,000 tithe check. Seeing myself. Remember, who contrary to hope and hope believed. I, I'm, I'm believing the $250,000 is going to come in. I believe that God is going to put resources into your hands. God is going to speak to you. And so at some point, $250,000, it, it pretty close a lump sum will come in, right? So I'm thinking about, and I'm meditating on writing that $25,000 tithe check. I'm seeing myself doing it because I'm expecting to do it. I'm painting a picture on the inside of me of God's word coming to pass. That's what you need to do. And since we've talked about it and I'm about out of time, um, I would like for you to become a partner, not just because it's the next level campaign. That's important. And, and I'd like for you to give your biggest gift you can today, but then become a monthly partner. Because literally you, all of these books that are coming out, all, all the new TV stations we go on, all the people that call in, that can be fruit to your account when you leave this body. But it's not just that. That food, that, that, those finances will produce fruit in your life today. You know, this is the reason that Paul says, not that I seek a gift, but that fruit may abound to your account. I have to be honest, I'm in both camps. I, I, I expect a gift, right? Not, I do desire a gift, but I also desire that fruit abound to your account. And so I'd like you to become a partner today so that we can be in this together. And every life changed can be on your account, both in the world to come, but now, and you can have a harvest today. I want you to consider this, but I want you to come right back. I want to pray with you about becoming a new partner. If you've been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Kurt Owen Ministries. Visit our website, KurtOwen.com, and become a partner today. Right now, wherever you are, if you would, become a partner. You can pick up your phone right now. You can text 45777. Type the words GIVE, K-O-M, G-I-V-E, K-O-M, to 45777. Or go to KurtOwen.com and become a partner today. And then every life changed will be on your account, both now and in the world to come. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my partners. And I thank you for those that are becoming partners today or those that are giving one-time gifts. Lord, I thank you that you will place upon my prayer time as I pray for them every day. I thank you, Lord, that you will direct me in the spirit how to pray for them and direct our staff how to pray for them. And I thank you, Father, that when they have a need, we have a need and we join our faith together with them. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you as they give, this will be the smallest they ever give because you will multiply that seed back to them and we will change this world for the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for becoming a partner. I'll see you next week. Remember, Jesus is risen. Victory is assured. Put your faith into action and recognize God's power in your life. Learn to trust God in every situation, knowing He will guide you into His will and purpose for your life in this powerful teaching series from Pastor Kurt Owen. We're offering this series on USB as our free gift to you.